Okay, y'all. All right, guys, shooting a little video here, man. This is a little bit of an experiment here. Uh, some things are going on with my channel. I've even been kind of like wary to even mention it. Some things are going on with the channel that makes that makes no sense. So I'm gonna be real careful, careful here. And this video is more or less just an experiment, right? I'll go ahead and show off my very small haul, okay? I just got a few books this month. Uh, it wasn't so much a lack of opportunity. It just seems like I'm really getting down to just wanting certain things or I'm just not running across anything that's really grabbing me, you know? So uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, give a big shout out to uh, Earl Gray. You can go check out his videos. He does these fantastic panelology books. But uh, in another video, I showed off a French um, graphic novel that one of my friends got in the early 2000s for me and how I was really wanting to get down and uh, translate it. You know, I've had it for years and I was bragging about how uh, on the book about how the uh, artist Tardy uh, seems to be able to tell a very good story, <clears throat> you know, uh, and you can just follow it through the pictures. Because honestly, uh, the sign of a very good comic book is you can still follow the story even if you don't read the words to a certain extent, right? And um, so basically, uh, Earl got in my comments and said, hey man, Fantagraphics has put these books out. Why is this coming off mirrored? Like I said, some weird stuff's going on. Anyway, but this is called uh, Fog Over um, Tol Tolbeck Bridge. And I found this on eBay really cheaper than I thought, considering that it's a hardback that came out this year uh, with uh, no uh, um, shipping on it. You know, free shipping was on this. And I got in here and I couldn't put it down. I read this in two settings, right? It's very wordy. That's the best way to put it. And it makes sense because they are... Uh, from what I can understand, uh, when they were doing these books in the early 80s, um, <clears throat> from what I could tell, this is a, a based on a Nestor Burma mystery, uh, Leo Mallet, uh, Mallet. This was uh, pretty much a series of novels that he did. And I started playing around on YouTube looking for more of uh, Nestor Burma. That's the character in here, the uh, hard-boiled uh, French detective. And, and this takes place in the 50s. Uh, but it uh, turns out there's like TV shows and everything over there. So apparently, at least in France, uh, from what I can tell, this is a big deal. So anyway, this was a story from around 82 or 83. Uh, it's just fantastic. Uh, I think Tardy here, or maybe it was Leo. I don't know which one it is, but there's a kindred spirit here for me. Like if I was writing stories, the way these characters uh, kind of have a little... They'll have conversations talking about the case and taking little shots at each other. And then all of a sudden, they'll say something really deep. Uh, something like, uh, they looked at uh, Nestor and said, are you okay? Because he was thinking back to his friends back when they were all anarchists. Uh, I think in the 30s in France. And he was sitting there thinking, I was thinking about my youth and how long ago it was and things like that. And I was just sort of like, yes. So this is just a fantastic, hard-boiled little story. Uh, where every now and then we will have this panel that'll just like just stab you. You know, it's just, it's really good. Uh, there's a part where Nestor, uh, there's a panel, just a panel where he's looking in the mirror and he's like, I saw an angry man looking at me. And it gave me the impression that he was wanting to say something like, people are going to die and I'm going to kill them. You know, just fantastic stuff. So I highly recommend this, man. Uh, just a great little mystery story, kind of... Uh, just, just fantastic. And the art, Tardy draws these, uh, he's walked around this, this town in France or something. There's no doubt in my mind, the way he draws the bridge and, um, the bridges and he draws the buildings and the, the automobiles and stuff. It's just the backgrounds are better than the, than the, the figures. It's just, it's amazing. It was just really cool, man. So I got a hold of a European comic, more or less graphic novel. And, <clears throat> and got to enjoy a different, um, I'm losing my voice, <coughs> excuse me, and just got to enjoy just a whole different flavor of comic here, fantastic stuff, highly recommend it, 
Okay, so for years, I couldn't get a hold of this book. I couldn't get a hold of the soup, this special, the Marvel uh, Super Special number 40, if I believe that's what it, what it was. And I didn't pick up the book in the stands back in the 80s because I was collecting the new universe. I wanted to get all those number ones, and I had a budget and all this stuff. I had a, had just had a little allowance, and I wanted to be at a, the start of a new universe. And I passed up this three-issue miniseries and stuff, right? So then all of a sudden, the book is a bit pricey when I would find it, if I ever did, uh, basically because it wasn't so much the comic book collectors wanting it. It was the the fans of this movie and the fans of David Bowie and stuff, right? So in the last couple of months, I found the first issue for a buck, and then I found issue two and three for a buck a piece, and they're a little bit beat up. And this one's a little bit beat up, but I found another one, another one for a buck, which was just fantastic. I was like, wow, that's awesome. So yeah, Labyrinth number one. And what I like about it is they even had got uh, David Bowie's eyes correct on here. There, there are two different colors. One is like permanently, I forget the word, dilated because he was punched when he was a kid uh, by another kid. Oh, this is fantastic, man. And John Bushima in that book. This, that's fantastic. Now, these books probably won't blow you away. This is a sort of a four-issue anthology series that Epic put out. And I've been finding them here than there. Uh, I think there was four issues. Uh, this says book four or four, but I swear I thought it was six. But anyway, it was called A1. Um, can't really tell you a whole lot about it besides there's a Simon Bosley cover in one of them. But, um, you know, these are high. I, I looked them up and I was putting them in Comic Book DB, and they've actually got some pretty good ratings on these books and stuff, right? So maybe I'll do a. Uh, um, I don't know, a review if there's anything in here that just blows me away and stuff, right? But anyway, these are uh, pretty thick. These are square bound, and they're from Epic. Marvel's Epic back in the day. This is a really cool cover. That is just a fantastic cover. Simon Bosley just came in there and just put some heavy metal in that uh, Frank Frazetta there. And I'm getting a little bit closer to completing my um, Baxter series, uh, Legion of Superheroes from the 80s. So I basically, I think I want to get, uh, I think there's only like maybe 64 issues or something like that, the Legion of Superheroes, so the Baxter series. And then before that, the Legion turned into the Legion of Superheroes from what was previously Superboy. So I think I kind of want to back up and get most of those issues. Now, I've got a long box full of nothing but Legion of Superheroes. And then there's the 1989, five years later, that I liked. They used a nine-panel grid, and everybody didn't like how grim and gritty it was. There was an invasion, basically, and the Legion got scattered, and grew, they grew up. There was some really good stuff in there. Yeah, and, and nobody knew who anybody was because they didn't go by their superhero names. They used their real names, but being a Legion fan, I could follow about every, I don't know, second or third character, usually. And it was fantastic. So, uh... The reason I'm talking about the Legion so much right now is that it's been really odd. Um, the Legion of Superheroes has always been kind of a cult book, a cult following, and uh, I didn't stand a chance. Um, it was the, the the Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes uh, was the first book I bought with my money in 1979, and then you had the Adventure Comics uh, little. Uh, Reader's Digest that reprinted two stories from the Silver Age, and then you had them on the stands, and uh, I just fell in love with them. And but it's really been blowing my mind because, like, on Twitter and a little bit on Facebook, when I jump on there and stuff, and I've been catching a podcast here or there that I haven't really sat down and really listened to. But um, it seems like the Legion. I don't know if it's where their 60th anniversary is coming up next year in 2018. But something's going on where people are jumping on or they've been fans and are talking more about it. But anyway, I got issue uh, 24 here. Uh, continue the mystery of who is Censor Girl, uh, who, who comes in there. Um, I would love to go into the story there, but I don't want to ruin it for anybody. Maybe I'll do a Legion video in the future here. Then I've got the Universo uh, Project, uh, Chapter 1. This is number 32. So like I said, just uh, tapping my way. I now have the entire story arc of this Universo project, so we'll see what's going on. But, you know, I got those for more or less a buck. And then this was a very cool find. It's a, it's a little bit beat up, but it's one of those books I've kind of always wanted uh, because I have the, the Daredevil issue um, by him. Uh, Harlan Ellison has always been a fan of comics, and he came in there and did a Batman story. 
Um, one of those things where I never thought I would get it. Now, get, this is this is a big, great copy. Don't get me wrong. But Claus Johnson, Jansen did the cover to this. And uh, this is right before Batman Year One started, even though it's Detective Comics here. Batman Year One uh, was probably about a couple months away, and we were jumping right off of the Dark Knight. So, of course, Cla Claus Johnson would jump up there and do a cover for it and give us our Dark Knight symbol there. And I loved how he made the uh, cityscape turn into a bat symbol. But a uh, little story about Harlan Ellison. Um, just a great author. He's done TV scripts and stuff like that. Um, and I always get his and Ray Bradbury's uh, works mixed up. Go figure, you know. And uh, real quick, I want to show what I got um, the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, I ended up uh, at a store. Uh, you know, you can get the best buys there and stuff. But I ended up getting a Blu-ray plus DVD plus digital copy of Kong Skull Island, and I loved this movie. I love this movie. I'm looking forward, so forward to the to the the monster universe that we're getting that's coming up, where they're going to have Pacific Rim, uh, King Kong, Godzilla come in, and you know, and hopefully that's going forward. I'm pretty sure Pacific Rim is going to be part of that. Uh, I I love my Tarzan. I could go on and on about Tarzan. Uh, and in another video, I will after I see how this one does and stuff. But uh, yeah, I've got The Legend of Tarzan that came out. Um, this was a great movie. If you like Tarzan, you need to get that. Um, Suicide Squad. Um, I, I, it's, it's, it's a popcorn movie, man. I kind of enjoy it. I can sit down and turn off my brain and watch this. Um, I think there was a lot of wasted characters in here. And I think they came up with a better story than just kind of walk in the streets if you will um but no all, all in all is pretty good they got a few characters right in this um so good to see batman uh, going on and then i got the uh, the movie of 2017 in my opinion uh and that's that's saying something but uh again at the i got the blu-ray dvd uh and digital copies of uh, wonder woman which was just a fantastic movie it was the, I haven't had a movie experience like this since Iron Man back in 2008, which has blown my mind that next year makes 10 years. But I, it's the same thing that happened. Uh, this one I was a little bit more uh, emotionally invested in just because going all the way back when I was a kid, uh, the Super Friends being on Saturday mornings and uh, Linda Carter's TV show. And of course, being a huge fan of uh, Lynn, Lynn Wayne and George Perez's uh, Wonder Woman books that George Perez eventually just took over. So I'm sitting there in the theater, and it was the same thing with Iron Man. I'm like, this should not be this good. And then to see them get so much right on uh, the mascara with the Amazons fighting the Germans and stuff like that, I was just sort of like, I could not believe what I was seeing. It was just fantastic. All right, guys, that's my short little haul there. So I'm going to load this up. I'm going to figure out why this is mirrored. Hopefully it won't show up that way. And uh, see if um, YouTube is going to be nice to me. All right, later, guys.